I, I will aim to peak around the 12 set mark for a whole session. Chrissy gets 12 sets in her first three exercises. Another video where I'm sounding pretty unwell and another video where I'm feeling pretty unwell too. I'm actually gonna approach this video slightly differently today. This is Chrissy Cheller's insane upper body workout for women. Typically what I do is I go through what Chrissy would say and I kind of give my opinion on the advice she's giving. But I wanna actually kind of take a slightly different approach here. I'm gonna go through the workout and the exercises, but I'm gonna give my advice on all the movements she's doing without any input from Chrissy and her advice whatsoever. So yes, I may repeat some of what she's saying, but I've muted the video so I can give my original input surrounding the movement she's doing see if any of the advice I give could better help you with your workouts. So upper body B implies it's her second upper body workout of the week. We've got T-bar bent over row, we've got dumbbell seated arm press, dumbbell incline bench press, then we've got a superset of cable rope straight arm pull down and cable rope kneeling face pulls, then a triset of dumbbell front raises, dumbbell crossover underhand front raises, dumbbell lateral raises. Immediately looking at this and obviously with the sets and reps, I have a lot I want to say, so we're gonna get into that. The T-bar row is actually a really common and quite popular movement, but initially one of my kind of hesitations with it, especially this early on in the workout, is the fact that the lower back often becomes quite a fatigue point for a lot of people so when you are in that bent over position especially this earlier on when your upper back muscles haven't been fatigued at all your lower back is more likely to fatigue and give out before your upper back muscles do therefore potentially limiting how effective this movement is for the upper back muscles if you are going to include a non-chest supported row variation i would typically probably throw it near the end of the workout when the lower back is still probably just as fresh as it was at the start or near enough but the upper back muscles are more fatigued therefore easier to take to failure therefore potentially reducing the the kind of strength deficit between the lower and the upper back, therefore reducing how much of a hindrance or weak link that lower back may become. You can essentially alter the T-bar row slightly to what you want to work. So with a, a neutral grip where the arms are typically a bit closer to the body, that would maybe shift a bit more emphasis onto the lats. If you go a bit of uh, overhand grip, so pronated grip with the arms either flared at 45 to 90 degrees, that would probably shift a bit more emphasis onto the upper back. So we're looking at things like the rhomboids, the traps, etc, etc. One of the things I will also note here is the lack of straps. So again, I'm not saying you have to use straps but realistically in a lot of cases your grip is probably going to give out before your back does therefore to again minimize how many weak links might be limiting the effectiveness of your back training it would make sense to potentially incorporate some straps into your training so you can then like i said remove grip as a limiting factor so the dumbbell seated arnold press in fairness to chrissy i'll give it this my gym has these dumbbells and they just feel exceptionally heavy all the time but yeah the dumbbell seated arnold, arnold press is essentially a shoulder press variation in which instead of going down like so and up you're kind of scooping round round and rotating and coming up. Does that work any of the shoulder muscles more effectively? Probably not. Does that limit how much weight you can use whilst not actually increasing the effectiveness of the movement? Probably. So for that reason, I would probably favor a standard seating dumbbell shoulder press myself, because again, this Arnold press, this extra rotation of movement isn't gonna do any more for the delts. If anything is actually potentially gonna make the movement less effective, which is probably not what you want to achieve. That being said, if you actually enjoy doing it because you find it a fun movement to perform, then yeah, I think that's fair enough reason to do it. Also, these like half benches that people use for shoulder press, I'm typically not a massive fan of. I typically like a, a full bench if you can, because that allows you to angle it back slightly if you want to, which a lot of people may find a bit easier on the shoulders when they're pressing. And also it gives you a bit more su support and we kind of want as much support as possible. The big thing here, not so much with the Arnold press, but if you're doing any kind of shoulder press variation, is going as low as you can within reason. Again, you don't have to. Typically, I always say go for the ears or a bit below. There's argument that the shoulders have their best leverage at about the 90 degree mark, but I typically like to go through the full range of motion if I can and what allows me to do that better is instead of flaring my elbows which you can do I tuck them slightly it allows me to like I said go through that range of motion a bit more comfortably not only is the TFNL home workout guide and growth guide linked down below in the description and potentially even the comment section too the TFNL group coaching is also linked down below as well in which I put together programs for you to follow either on your own or as a group via the train heroic app which costs less than your Netflix subscription there's a message board in there and a group chat so we can all talk to each other and you can ask me questions give your thoughts on the workouts and all those bits and bobs it's very exciting and it's very community driven and obviously the growth guide and the home workout guide are two bloody exquisite fitness resources that I've put together with my friend Ryder that will help you really get the most out of your training at home and at the gym as well whether you're resistance training or bodyweight training there's something for everyone with plenty 
of programming in there. I think if you look at the two guides together, that all the programming accumulates about 66 weeks of programming. Have a gander if you want to, but never feel any pressure to. So then we go on to an incline dumbbell bench press. Again, fantastic movement. Big fan of the incline dumbbell bench press. I think ultimately it is very much a question of the thing with incline. Obviously, when we're working these shoulder press, we're looking at the delts. When we're looking at the incline, we're typically looking to place a bit more emphasis on the clavicular fibers of, of the chest, so like the upper chest, whilst also still bringing like the anterior delts and whatnot. The thing with the inclines, you don't need to go crazy with it. You do not need a high incline. I think Chrissy's incline here is absolutely perfect. Regarding shoulder retraction, I think your shoulders should move how they want to move. So I typically kind of retract to initiate the press, but allow them to kind of move freely if they need to. I rarely keep them locked in one position while I'm stuck in retraction throughout the entire movement. Again, that's probably not what your, your shoulders want to do. This arching, if you're looking at the context of hypertrophy, you actually want to minimize how much arch is occurring here because again, that shifts your body into a slightly different position, which may actually shift emphasis away from the upper chest and maybe a bit more down to the sternal kind of mid pecs. If your back is flat, your body angle is obviously going to change slightly. Therefore, emphasis might be placed more on the upper chest, which is probably what you're doing this movement for. That being said, if you're powerlifting, for example, when you're bench pressing, you probably want to get as much of an arch as you can to minimize range of motion to lift as much weight as possible. So that's very much goal specific and goal dependent, we'll say. So with the incline press, I think ultimately you can flare the elbows if you want to, but I typically try and tuck them a little bit more. I've made the argument before about fiber orientation of the pecs, how the, the pec fibers run down about 45 degrees. So it almost makes sense to some extent to press it at that same angle, but I don't think you necessarily need to. That's just uh, if you want to, you can. I don't think it's going to be make or break. I think you should press at the arm angle that allows you to go through the best and most comfortable range of motion. And for a lot of people, that's actually going to be slightly tucked. So you can go through a greater range of motion, thus lengthening the pecs a bit more, which is kind of the purpose of this movement. It's a length and position dominant movement. Therefore, it makes sense to be able to lengthen those pecs as effectively as you can by going as low as you can within reason. So we've got this cable rope straight arm pull down or pull over how you want to do it. I actually back using a rope. Ideally, you kind of want a slightly wider grip so you can keep the arms a bit closer to the body, but a pullover movement where you can keep the hands neutral does allow the upper arms to stay a bit closer to the body, less abduction, so less of this, which means the lats may be better utilized. But like I said, in doing so, I would probably favor like a wider grip, so getting like a uh, bar, and maybe using two D handles to again, better allow you to keep the arms tucked close to the body. The face pull, I actually think is a fantastic movement. Do I think it's a fantastic movement for the context of hypertrophy? Probably not, because again, if you think about rear delts, you're kind of going up here, you kind of want to go down for the rear delts. But what I do think it's fantastic for is shoulder health and injury prevention, especially if you're doing lots of pressing, this kind of external rotation you get through the face where you go like that, it's gonna be really good for shoulder health. So doing like really high rep face pulls, let's say like 20, 30, 40, even 50 reps perhaps, will potentially put your shoulders in a really good position when looking at stability and health, which is something a lot of people do overlook, myself included. Supersets, I think ultimately, do you need to superset? There is an argument I've presented before that supersets could kind of take away from the effectiveness of the individual exercises because you're going to be fatigued going into the next one. But again, if you're doing this movement less for the context of hypertrophy, but more for the context of maybe shoulder health and stability, I think a superset would have more of a time and place. But the fact she's implementing the straight arm pull down kind of suggests that it's probably more for hypertrophy or similar. With the Facebook doing a kneeling is a big yes. I think when you stand, you have the risk of like stability throwing you off where you're going to be rocking. So do a kneeling, seated perhaps, whichever way gives you the most stability possible, reducing potential weak links and limiting factors like balance. So this is the thing I wanted to talk about, the tricep. So a superset is two movements back to back. A tricep will obviously be three movements back to back. So we've got dumbbell front raise pull apart, dumbbell crossover underhand front raise and dumbbell lateral raise. We're going out to the side of the lateral raise and coming into the front to the front raise position and back. I, I, I'm not going to back it to be honest. I think ultimately choose one, not the other, I'd say. For most people, you're going to get a lot of front delt activation and utilization through all your pressing movements, so shoulder press, incline press, etc. I probably wouldn't do any direct front delt work for a lot of people. I have not done any direct front delt work beyond pressing, I mean, like isolation work, I should say, for years. Again, I'd probably stick to lateral raise variations. And with the lateral raise, I probably wouldn't raise out to the side. I'd probably raise about 30 to 45 degrees in front of you. When it comes to the underhand grip front raise, again, there's actually an argument I think Paul Carter presented that he believes this movement is actually better for the upper pecs than the front delts, which I thought was really interesting. Again, I'm not going to elaborate on that too much further because I need to understand it more and need to research more before I can give an opinion I'm happy with, but it's definitely an interesting take. And then it goes into a dumbbell lateral raise, which she's obviously raising out to the side to work the kind of side of her delts rather than the front. I don't think a tricep is necessary. I think, yeah, it's going to really burn. It's going to really hurt. But I think in the grand scheme of things, I would probably bin off all of those entirely and just do the dumbbell lateral raise, but in a slightly different position. So like I said, leaning forward slightly, arms out 30 to 45 degrees in front of you. So you're raising the scapular plane, aiming to keep your arms as straight as possible. And almost like you're trying to touch the corners of the room you're in. So regarding the effectiveness of the work, I do like how she structured it in the sense 
sense that she started with the big kind of multi-joint movements first and then moved over to the isolations later. I think that's probably quite a good way of structuring things, but do you have to do it that way? Absolutely not. It's just probably my preferred way of structuring things because again, she mentioned this earlier, you want to keep the, the big movements at the start when you have the most energy, which I kind of do back and actually align with myself. Then obviously we've seen the movements. I've given my thoughts and opinion, but from the volume perspective, four sets of six, four sets of eight, four sets of six, three sets of 12, three sets of 12, two by 10, two by 10, two by 10. That's a lot of volume. I will rarely do more than 12 sets in a day. Again, not always. It depends. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less, but I will rarely kind of, I, I will aim to peak around the 12 set mark for a whole session. Chrissy gets 12 sets in her first three exercises. The most amount of exercises I'll typically do in a day is probably seven. In reality, it's actually nearer six, but I, I might push up to seven. So again, that's, that's a lot of volume and probably more volume than you actually need. In reality, the bigger driver of hypertrophy, so building muscle is going to be intensity. So how hard are you doing what you're doing rather than how much of it are you doing? The reps, I actually back the reps here. I'm a big fan of the lower rep ranges, as I mentioned before. Even here, I don't think the reps are going high whatsoever. So I think her rep range selection is really nice. The kind of like six to 12 mark. But what I would do is probably offer like a bit more of a range. So rather than six reps, I say six to 10. Rather than eight, I say eight to 10 maybe or eight to 12 perhaps and, and vice versa. Because again, if you're doing four sets to six to failure, you might do one six, the next might be a five, then a four, then a three. So if you're actually pushing yourself hard enough, it's going to be really hard to maintain a consistent number of reps each set. That's why I typically like a range. Not in all cases, but in a lot of cases. Again, mainly for the context of hypertrophy. If you're powerlifting, you're probably going to be working a bit more reserved so you, that you can get away with doing multiple sets of the same reps. I, I think there's certainly some good things here. Again, I don't know the information that Chrissy was promoting during this video because I didn't want to essentially give my opinion on what she was saying. I wanted to give my own original opinion on what she was doing. But I'm sure in a lot of cases, Chrissy's information is usually actually quite good, especially as of recently. So I'm sure she was kind of spitting some good facts throughout this video. But I must say for myself personally, I would definitely alter the movement selection. I would definitely alter the movement order. I would definitely alter the volume as well. But at least she is choosing a few good movements. She's doing them with pretty solid technique, which I always respect. And I think regardless, she's encouraging women to work out, which I think is fantastic. She's also encouraging the importance of upper body workouts, which again, I think is also fantastic, which I really do appreciate. Like I said, I'm filming this before Ireland, so no comments question of the week this week, but we should be back on track very soon. That is it. That is the video. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my lingering and remaining illness. And thank you for tolerating the video.